welcome to Zion Lutheran Church here in Hollidaysburg. This is the online worship service, and it is a joy to be with you. I am supplying this weekend Pastor Suzanne Morelli. It's good to be with you. We begin by the confession from our hearts and the promise of God's forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all of creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gifts of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble, cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. God hears the cries of all who call out in need. Through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Led by the Holy Spirit, live in freedom, newness to do God's work and in the world. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
reading from Psalm 96. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and praise his name. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all peoples. For great is the Lord, most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord, all you families of the nations, Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an offering and come into his courts. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. Tremble before him all the earth. Here ends the reading of this psalm. A reading according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Paul, Silas, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God, the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace and peace to you. We always thank God for all of you, continually mentioning you in our prayers. We remember before our God and Father your work produced by faith, your labor prompted by love, and your encouragement and endurance inspired by hope in our Lord Jesus Christ. For we know, brothers and sisters loved by God, that he has chosen you because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power, with the Holy Spirit and deep conviction. You know how we lived among you for your sake. You became imitators of us and of the Lord, for you welcomed the message in the midst of severe suffering with the joy given by the Holy Spirit. And so you became a model to all the believers in Macedonia and Achaia. The Lord's message rang out from you, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, your faith in God has become known everywhere. Therefore, we do not need to say anything about it, for they themselves report what kind of reception you gave us. They tell how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and the true God and to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us from the coming wrath. Here ends the reading. Please pray with me, if you will. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of our hearts, be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our very life. Amen. So I would ask, what is in a name? Whether our name is called with endearment or more with formality, it identifies us and it connects us. Our names, whether we're being called out for dinner or called out for a diploma, that gets our attention. Our response is implied. A response is invited. God, God knows our name. God knows your name. God knows our truest self and also what we struggle with and what delights our hearts. Many times our lives can become layered, one layer over the other, of things that would keep us from becoming our truest self, our best selves. And whether this comes from within or even outside, we can become trapped by these layers. 
only. In the name of the living God, can we be freed to truly live, truly live as we are called to live, called by name. We need this God who comes to us in that name of Jesus, fully human, fully God, the one who intersects our lives with the cross and entered into suffering and death on our behalf. One savior for all time from the past, present, into the future, the great triune God, Jesus coming to us as human and as God. Our living God is in our midst. Our powerful God is in our midst. We are given the gifts of prayer, the gifts of scripture, living word of God, and the gifts of one another in community, even though it is a bit different in these times during this pandemic. We have one another. We are not alone. And fourthly, worship. Lifting our hearts in praise, continuing to connect with God and acknowledge who God is. God inhabits the praise of his people. There is strength and power in that. And courage. Thessalonians reminds us that Paul is praying for the community of faith by name. We always thank God for all of you continually mentioning you in our prayers, mentioning by name. And it goes on that how he remembers the work of God that they have continued with, faith, hope, and love, even sometimes against all odds, they continued. And then he moves on, he says, for we know brothers and sisters loved, loved by God. He's chosen you, he's called you, called you by name because the gospel came not only with words, but with power and the Holy Spirit and the strength that God can give in their lives and our lives. And then he goes on, he says, you welcomed the message in the midst even of severe suffering, yet with joy given by the Holy Spirit. So the strength that we have continuing to know that this God is with us. Our wounded world does need, desperately need healing. When we turn to our Lord fully, not a 360 back at ourselves, but a 180 toward God, we become our truest selves. And it is that ebb and flow process, but continuing to do that daily. As we remember, this living God is in our midst. We're not alone. The healing of the world is in process. And we can be a part of that. Our spirits can be calmed when we get anxious. We can be united in God's will in this time in which we live. I love Psalms. <laughs> if anybody knows me much, I do love the Psalms that continue to feed our spirit in the midst of many prayers for many different times and for the times that we live now. But it says God will sing a new song in our lives. How wonderful that is. Proclaiming God's salvation day after day, it's a practice declaring glory among the nations. This God is a great God worthy of praise. And so it continues on, you know, it speaks of gods that are idols, but that the true God who made the heavens and the earth and the splendor and the majesty before him encourages families, ascribe to the Lord, families of the nations, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. And so this brought to mind for me this emphasis of praise 
and of singing a song to an experience I had a number of years ago. It was right after undergraduate school and I was traveling with a very close friend of mine. Her name was Bethany. She and her husband now live in Paraguay, South America. But at that time, we were visiting my brother in Alaska and family that was there. But we had taken a trail. We were hiking. And as we continued to hike and visit together and enjoy the path, we went up a little knoll. And as it rose up along our path before us, right before us, we froze because we were 20 to 25 feet from a huge moose who locked eyes with us. Now, we could have been screaming, we could have run, and most likely we would have provoked this beautifully monstrous beast, a bullwinkle in the wild, if you will. But we turned together and didn't know what to do, but we turned around and walked softly back the direction in which we came. And we started singing softly. I can't remember which one of us started singing first, but we joined together, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust, I will not be afraid. The Lord thy God is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. This is true for you too, proclaiming this goodness of God. We will not be afraid. We can trust in this strength and song that God has given us. And so, thankfully, that wondrous beast did not charge after us. As we looked back, whew, we were so thankful. It's humorous in the days that we talked about it and years later, but our hearts were beating very fast in those moments. God calms our hearts in the midst of danger. We need to use the gifts that the living God has given us. Four amazing gifts of prayer, scripture, living scripture, one another, whether it is face-to-face -face or connecting in other ways, wearing masks, caring about one another that way, worshiping the living God, for God inhabits the praises of his people. When our hearts are open and acknowledge who God truly is, at least a gem of what we know of what God truly is, God comes. He will not deny a sincere heart. So these are the basics, but they are bold basics, guiding gifts of our Lord for us. And they're for every day and for every night. Let us not neglect these amazing gifts that connect us to our God, to one another, and for guidance, strength, and courage. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With confidence in God's grace and mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you call us by name and invite us to share your good news. Send your Holy Spirit among preachers, missionaries, and evangelists. We give thanks for the witness of your servant Luke, the evangelist, whom the church commemorates today. Lord, in your mercy, hear it. God of praise, the heavens and all creation declare your salvation. From the rising of the sun to its setting, may the whole universe show forth your goodness. Raise up devoted stewards of all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. God of all, may your word of justice sound forth in every place. Restore divided nations and communities with reconciling truth. Be with the members of our military, including Gabrielle, Sam, Zach, Colin. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we seek you as we enter this time before our national election, guard us against violence in our nation. May we all seek your peace and pray for peace over our lives and this nation for the coming month. Lord, in your mercy. God of light, we pray for those living with pain, illness, isolation, grief, anger, or doubt. Especially we remember those on our prayer list, Regina, Libby, Susan, Kathy, Ed, Zachary, Rachel, Elvin, for Steve, Lily, Joyce, Marsha, Lorraine, Ben, Sandra, and Tim, Eric and Mandy, Dennis, Steve, Mitch, Lois, and Roger, Alan, Ron, and Doug, and all those that we hold in our heart and lift to you. We remember Eileen and Jake. Join their voices in a new song, assuring them that you call them each by name. Lord, in your mercy. God of truth, you show no partiality. May your spirit guide the work of justices, magistrates, court officials, and all vocations of the law, that your promise of restoration may be known. Lord, in your mercy. Living God, as you raise Jesus from the dead, so raise up those who have died in you. We give thanks for their witness, confident of your rescuing welcome for all. Lord, in your mercy. Listen as we call on you, O God, and enfold in your loving arms all for whom we pray, 
in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Dwell in peace. Christ is with you.